The report also pointed out that AI may be entering kind of a period of disillusionment. AI is transforming the way we work and data engineering is at the heart of it all. Did you know that skills like Gen AI grew 289% and data engineering saw a 29% surge in 2024. Today, we're going to explore how these trends are reshaping the, the way we work and what that is going to mean for your career. So sit right there as we explore O'Reilly's 2025 Technology Trends Report. So according to the O'Reilly 2025 Tech Trends Report, data engineering it saw an increase of 29% in 2024 and expects it to continue to grow into 2025 and beyond. Part of that growth, according to the report, is seen primarily because AI systems rely heavily on clean, scalable, and high-quality data pipelines. Where do those data pipelines come from? Data engineers. So if you are looking to get into data engineering and have been concerned that AI might be taking away some of those jobs, don't be concerned anymore. Understand, and I've preached this before in my videos, AI requires data engineers. Understand that data engineers are big moving forward as we continue to evolve with AI. Things like real-time fraud detection and banking and recommendation engines in e-commerce and on video platforms such as YouTube and Netflix, all of that data, all of that information that's being fed into those models are being fed by data engineers that are cleaning that data, that are making sure that it's groomed and ready for those machine learning and AI engines. So. What does this mean for you? It's simple. If you are in data, now is the time to continue to level up your engineering skills. You'll see in some of the comments around here, I get fairly often a question about how is data engineering changing with AI as we move into 2025 and 2028 and beyond. You know, there's this fear out there that AI is coming for my job. AI isn't about replacement. It is about enhancing your ability, your skills. Some of the examples that I would, you know, put out there for you is AI automates, again, some of those repetitive tasks, some of those hodrum tasks that you just don't want to do really. AI is there to help with those types of things, like cleaning some messy data sets and even documentation. It helps you to be able to do some EDA, which is exploratory data analysis, which is a topic that we're gonna get into over the next few weeks on the channel. AI tools like TensorFlow and Snowflake amplify productivity for data engineers. So a quote from the report is, the future is not about fearing AI's impact on jobs, but in harnessing its potential to drive innovation. And with great innovation comes great responsibility. So let's talk about data governance. All right, for those of you that are new to data engineering and data, the data world altogether, what is data governance? Data governance is the practice of ensuring that your data is accurate, consistent, and secure. So having standards, making sure that, you know, things like the format of your date is consistent from data set to data set, compliance with regulations such as GDPR and CCPA, avoiding costly fines and reputation damage to your business. And finally, building trust in AI systems through transparency and accountability. Think of data governance like maintaining a clean kitchen. If it's not clean, the results in this case, insights really could be harmful. You want your health score of the restaurant you go to to be high, right? Well, you want your governance score and your governance of your data to also be high for very similar reasons. The report noted that security governance has overtaken traditional network security, you know, emphasizing the need for company-wide policies that help to maintain trust and prevent data breaches. 
Next, we're going to talk about how do you future-proof your career in the age of AI and data governance. All right, here are some practical tips to stay ahead. One, learn core skills. AI preach this all the time. SQL, SQL, SQL. You cannot understand SQL well enough if you're as you're going into any of the data professions. Next, you know, look at you know ETL processes. Those remain essential. And then finally, you could hit up Python as you're kind of wrapping up some of your core programming type skills. Explore some of the AI tools that are out there. Get familiar with platforms like Databricks and Snowflake or machine learning tools like TensorFlow. Uh, you know, the genie that's in Databricks does an amazing job really helping you to speed up your productivity by suggesting different pieces, different functions, different wording. Understand governance. Dive into data privacy laws and best practices and really have a good understanding of them so that as you're pulling data and providing access to data, that you're following those procedures and those guidelines and you have things set up so that when you get a request from a customer to remove their information from your systems, you know where that data is and you know where to remove it from to keep your business from rank, uh, you know, racking up some pretty hefty fines. Adopt a growth mindset. Commit to lifelong learning to keep up with these evolving technologies. You know, in my 25 years, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of growth. There has absolutely been continuous learning on my behalf and everybody's behalf that has been in the profession, and it will continue for as long as I could see it. So you have to really have a growth mindset if you're going to be in any of the data professions, especially if you're going to look into data engineering. Next, I'm going to go into what my take is on why some of these trends are just so exciting. All right. So in my 25 years in data, I've seen trends come and go, just like I finished talking about. But the rise of AI and the renewed focus on data engineering really is inspiring and feels different. And it's so exciting. Uh, Embracing tools like AI has really, you know, helped, will continue to help me to solve and innovate problems, does a great job with brainstorming different solutions that you may not have thought of otherwise, especially if you're in an environment where you may be the only data engineer. AI can be your sounding board if you're in that kind of silo, if you don't have a peer support already set up. ChatGPT does a good job of that brainstorming. There are plenty of tools. Again, the genie in Databricks does an awesome job really helping you out with maybe you forgot what the field name is and it will suggest it. Um, and so it, it does a really good job with those types of things. So it keeps you from having to go back and forth. Uh, but I want to hear from you. And we're going to talk about that in as we wrap up. All right, so tell me, I really want to know, for those of you that have been watching the channel, you know that I, did, I come out and I try to engage the community really often, and I always, always re reply to the comments that you leave on the videos. So tell me, what do you think is the next big game changer in AI and in data engineering? Is it prompt engineering, AI agents, or maybe something else entirely that isn't on my radar? Drop your thoughts and comments down below, and I really look forward to seeing what you have to say. And let's start a conversation about what that future of AI and data engineering really looks like. The report also pointed out that AI may be entering kind of a period of disillusionment where the hype dies down a little bit and the focus shifts to a little bit more realistic application of the tools and resources that are being developed. This is really a natural phase as you know people get really excited about the new tool and then you know they maybe realize oh it's not as game changing or as transformative as you think it is but there are still some really great applications practical applications of this tool so 
uh, it's so it's a natural phase for any transformative technology like this. And it's our opportunity to continue to work to build sustainable and impactful systems as we move forward. If you have found this helpful, if you found this interesting, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what part of it really resonated with you. I'm super excited about the growth of our channel and our community, and I look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget that on Friday nights at 10 p.m., we do live sessions, live Q&A sessions. Sometimes I pull other people in for interviews and for chats, so live chats during the calls. And so be sure to tune into those. I will talk to you next time.